this is Ahmed. I expect more audience, but uh, there's some of you, but I think it's much better for me because it's not as scary and it's more friendly this way. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to start my presentation. Uh, this presentation is specially for uh, wireless antennas, uh, which is came from, from telecommunications. And there is a few knowledge in the IT business because uh, it's not long to hear. It's uh, about magnetic field. That's really complicated thing in uh, the telecommunications. But here we really needed to know because we deal everywhere, every day, everywhere uh, with wireless antennas. Our uh, radio link could not be established without a wireless antenna. And without that, we can do nothing. And uh, we should know some details about wireless antennas, uh, which can help us uh, in many, many cases, uh, many cases that uh, our link are not established. We have some problem with uh, radios or something like that. It can be helpful. Uh, we are going to uh, let you know about some details, some very technical details in an easy way. Um, um, many of these details is really hard to understand even in the uh, academic uh, classes, even in university, um, some, some very, very complicated. But uh, I change it to the easy way that it's possible for everyone to uh, know about it. And let's start our presentation. Uh, the history of the first antenna is back to uh, 1887, and uh, its hertz uh, is uh, saved us from cables in that moment, and uh, he built a simple dipole uh, for his own uh, radio system. Uh, it's a two-wire cable. And uh, after that moment, uh, uh, the uh, other people start to uh, build some new antennas, uh, and the antenna knowledge become more popular. And uh, today, it's really, really helpful for us to uh, use very high gain antenna. The first antenna, it could be less than one dBi, and in this moment, we have. 42 dBi in high frequencies, and that's really good for us. Okay, uh, let's go uh, to find out why we should use antenna and uh, why today it's the uh, uh, most important and essential part of the radio system. Um, you always uh, see a lamp. Uh, it's here, it's everywhere. Um, you use a lamp in your home everywhere. Um, the start standard lamp uh, is, is should be uh, something about uh, 100 watts or something. If it's economic, it should be something around 18 watts, uh, 40 watts. Um, it can light a small room. Uh, for here, there's uh, lots of lights here. Um, uh, you can imagine this power could light the room uh, without any any problem. But is it possible to light to 200 meters away with a light? It's not possible. Uh, what we have a laser, it's only 15 uh, millivolts. It's really, really, uh, really, really uh, low power. But you can see the laser spot uh, two kilometers away. And um, maybe you should ask why it's possible. Um, we have a very powerful lamp. It's uh, 100 watts. It can only light a uh, room, not more. But uh, a small laser torch, it can light. It can. Uh, you can see a spot in two kilometers away. Uh, and uh, <coughs> why, why it's possible. Um, Everybody knows that, why it's possible, because uh, that torch, uh, it's only at a spot, and uh, the, uh, every uh, light uh, become narrow to a point, but that lamp is uh, start to light up a room. 
Uh, that's the antenna doing for us, and that's exactly uh, we expect the antenna to do for us. Okay, let's start with radio pattern, a radiation pattern. Um, it's a little bit complicated thing, uh, also as anything else in the uh, wireless antennas. Um, you may have heard about um, uh, radiation pattern, uh, even uh, what I'm saying here is a little bit complicated. It's a plot of radiation field to power as a function of angle at a fixed distance. Uh, it looks hard to understand, but uh, let's do it in an easy way. Um, um, first of all, um, uh, we want, uh, I want to uh, make, make example for uh, what we are going to do with a uh, uh, radiation pattern, how we should find out a radiation pattern. If we turn off all the lights, uh, lights in the room, it, it becomes a dark room. And if this screen becomes a, a light sensor, it can show us how many lights here in DB. Uh, so we have a test equipment system here. Uh, we we uh, are going to light up a torch right in the end of the saloon and start doing this. Um, when we turn it on, uh, there's small lights uh, that this sensor could sense uh, from that torch. When we are start turning it around, it start it come bigger, bigger, bigger. It log uh, the more signal, uh, it log more lights from our torch. When we are right in front of it, it, it can sense the uh, much as signal uh, as possible, as much as light as possible, because our torch is start to uh, make a spot on this screen and it log the most powerful lights uh, on it. After we start turning around, it becomes lower and lower and lower, and then it becomes nothing when we are uh, right in the back of it, and uh, it's finished. So, if we have a computer here, it can log the angles and change it to the power. It can log the angle and power in the same time. Uh, we are going to have a pattern. What we have here, it's a lab, it's an antenna lab. Uh, in the uh, right side, uh, we have a standard gain horn. Uh, it's doing exactly the same thing that the screen does for us for that torch. And that one, uh, we are put it, uh, put antenna uh, on that uh, and start turning around. While it's start cycling, uh, this one is start transmitting and that one is start receiving our, on signal our test antenna and then we are going to have a pattern in angles. Uh, it's still complicated, I know. There is a video uh, we can uh, find out what is the antenna. Uh, we are, oh, it's so dark. I don't know how it can fix it, but it's so dark, it should be more lighter than this. Uh, we put an antenna on a test platform. Uh, that, uh, there, there is exactly a test uh, horn antenna. It's standard gain antenna and, and start to transmitting a fixed power signal uh, from here. And uh, that's the antenna we put in on the test, and that's the screen. It can show us the power in angles. Uh, uh, that stepper motor uh, starts uh, turning around, and it, it, in each angle, uh, this computer will log power in that angle. Let's watch the video. Okay, it starts. Uh, and start turning, turning around. Uh, it start plug the power of the antenna receive signal. That's the that's the main power of the uh, antenna. And start cycling. Uh, it's going uh, to the side. Uh, now it start going backward. Um, it's it's exactly. Um, uh, the backward of the antenna, 
uh, start a log signal there, and uh, in this moment it came back to the first position. So, uh, that antenna pattern appears this way. Uh, Oh, everyone understand uh, what is the antenna pattern? Anyone has a problem? Because without that, we cannot go further. It's a friendly community, and you can ask him, Christian, if you know, uh, get it. So, uh, no news, good news. Let's go for the E plane and H plane. Uh, uh, it's also complicated. Uh, when we want to talk about E plane of an antenna or H plane of an antenna, we just uh, see some um, patterns from every antenna manufacturer. It says it's an E plane and it's an H plane of the antenna. Uh, but absolutely, uh, just few of us know exactly what's, what is what does it mean. Uh, so. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's a picture of an Omni antenna. Um, it's it's a simple dipole antenna. Um, um, the Democracy also have one. Uh, we are using in our computers. Um, it, it's it's really really useful antenna. Um, we, we are going to uh, make it. Uh, in an easy way because it's 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 a little bit complicated to describe it in in, uh, in, in very detail. But um, in in this case, we just describe the E plane and H plane of antenna in a vertical polarized antenna. Uh, about the polarization and the vertical polarized, uh, we have some sections to describe about it. But here, uh, we just only uh, uh, talk about the, uh, uh, the only E plane and H plane in a vertical polarized antenna. So here, um, that, that what does it say? Uh, we can read it. Uh, I'm going to uh, say it in an easy way. Uh, when you have an antenna, uh, you, you have an antenna here. My finger is antenna. Uh, exactly the same thing. But that doesn't work. The try it doesn't. And uh, we're looking uh, from Oster to it to antenna pattern. Okay. Uh, then we are going to have the H plane. Uh, when you are looking upstairs from it. It means if there is some users sitting around and they're opening their own laptop, uh, they can uh, receive the signal exactly the same everywhere in this salon because it's only directional antenna and it exactly has the same pattern everywhere in 360, 360 degrees. Uh, what about the E plane? Uh, maybe some some users we have upstairs and they want also use our antennas. Uh, is it possible someone right up here use our antenna? Uh, regarding to this picture, uh, the answer is no because this this antenna only have a pattern in an E plane in this way, but it cannot cover upstairs. Um, in the easy way, uh, when we want to know about the E plane of antenna, we are looking uh, from side of it, uh, side of an antenna. We are looking at pattern from side. Uh, if it's my finger, um, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> it's, it should be like this. Uh, when we are looking aside from it. Um, it, it's the most easiest description about E plane and uh, H plane uh, and uh, how it's useful. Uh, imagine you you start using its sector antenna for cover your area for uh, so many, too many point to multi point users. Um, the, your users are in different elevation. Um, yeah, maybe some hills in your city, maybe some t uh, some uh, tall towers in your city, uh, and uh, you want to know uh, if your antenna could cover your <coughs> customers or not. 
Uh, you should look at the implant of your uh, onset of pattern to know that if it's possible to cover all of them with uh, onset of your chips. Maybe in, in so many cases you choose uh, you choose a high gain antenna, high gain sector antenna, uh, but uh, to make it better, but it becomes worse because uh, you you start using the wrong antenna because the angles has become uh, narrower, it's become smaller, and uh, a few users could start using your uh, signal, and uh, most of them losing the signal in that case. And that's why the e-plane is important. So, uh, what about the each plane? Um, we're uh, going to back to, to uh, my previous example. Um, we are using the sector antenna in an area to cover our users. Uh, one of our users is in the east and one of our users are in the south. Uh, the difference angle between two users is 90 degrees, but we start using the antenna with 60 degrees and right in the middle. Uh, not the west one, not the east one could use our uh, signal and uh, we are star wasting our signal in that way. And that's why the edge plane in a vertical polarized antenna uh, is really important for us to know uh, the angles of the E plane or H plane. Uh, so, in, in, in my examples, we need some, some more things uh, that is missing, and it's the 3 d beam bit of your antenna we are going to describe about it. Uh, first of all, here, are you tired? Everybody's wake up? Okay. Uh, we are going to uh, start with 3 d and uh, we just want to know why the 3 dB important, why that's why it, why it's not 5 dB, 10 dB, or anything else. Why, why everybody says uh, 3 dB beam of our antenna or half power beam of our antenna. Um, first, we are going to um, have some experience with dB of the Um Here, um, well, we had a conversation for a lot. Uh, from uh, middlewoods to DBM. Um, um, maybe you should ask uh, what is that M uh, with the DB? It came from middlewoods. If you use that M, it means you're, uh, you, you are uh, calculating in the middlewoods. If you don't use that M, it's really important. It means it's watts. If you want to change uh, 100 uh, millivolts. And if you write it down, just uh, one, uh, it becomes 20 uh, dBm. But if you forget to using M, it means you have a 100 watts and radio equipment, and maybe it's dangerous for you. A government's come for you, or anything else happen for you. <laughs> Uh, so, here we are uh, trying to change uh, 100 milliwatt radios to dB. Uh, with this uh, calculation, we are going to have 20 dB. <laughs> now, we have over the 100 milliwatts. Then it's become uh, uh, 50. And then, again, we try to convert it to the dBm, and it's become 70. And uh, while we are uh, having our power, uh, it's only 3 dB mis missing in this case. And uh, if you try uh, a thousand times with every every other uh, numbers, you will reach exactly the same number. Uh, when you're losing half power of your radio equipment, uh, you're losing 3 dB. Okay, and that's why the 3 dB is important in the antenna. So, let's go what, uh, to find out what is the 3 dB beam of our antenna. Um, um, here is the antenna pattern. Uh, the maximum power of this antenna is 40. This 40 doesn't mean it's a 40 dB antenna. And it means the maximum power that our antenna uh, receiver uh, received is 40. Okay, it doesn't mean anything in, in the, about the gain. It just means the maximum receive power, our receive power is 40. So, uh, we want to know what is the 3 dB limit of our antenna. 
uh, all we should do is go in and find out where is uh, which angle uh, of this pattern uh, carrying the uh, 3dv uh, less power of the end center. Here uh, in the, the angle of 87.6 uh, in the left side and uh, 94.1 in the right side we have uh, 3dv losing power. So, it means uh, we, we want to reach 3dB limit of this antenna. Uh, we are going to um, do some calculations. Uh, 87.6 minus 94.1, it becomes 6.5 degrees. And it means our 3dB of antennas is uh, 6.5. Okay. It's a parabolic dish, and the diameter of this dish is 55. Um, there is a formula to calculating uh, in theory uh, what is the 3 dB beam of antenna should be, and that's the calculation. Uh, Anybody here uh, doesn't know about lambda of wavelengths? Then just just let me know because we have plenty of time. I mean, we're run, run out of time, but there's few <laughs> people here, and I can answer your question. Um, uh, here, uh, the, 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 we are uh, just want to know uh, the wavelengths of the antenna. Uh, we measure this antenna in uh, lab in 5.5 uh, gigahertz, and uh, the wavelength of, the, of that uh, um, frequency is uh, 5. 0.45. Uh, we use that calculation to find out the wavelengths. And after this formula, the 3 dB beam width should be 6.93. There is a little bit short, and it's acceptable because it's not a theory; it's it's a real situation. Okay. Uh, um, sorry about the example. Uh, uh, Sector and center. It's it's a 3D pattern of that sector. Uh, in 3D, it's much easier to find out about E plane, H plane, and 3D beam limit. Uh, here, uh, so we are, we are both have H plane and E plane. Uh, which one is H plane? Just 3D in your mind. Which one? Which one is H plane at this center? Uh, these two is the edge plane of the antenna. Okay, and which one is a uh, uh, e plane of this antenna? This one and that one. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, if you use this sector uh, here, I'll uh, show it by my finger because there is no laser pointer. Uh, here, uh, you have a user here. Okay. Uh, there is small beam of this antenna could cover your user, or you should uh, change the tilt of your antenna to cover this user standing here. But you can perfectly cover your user standing here. And, and for the e, uh, for the edge plane, uh, it it can show us if we have a user here or here. It's 45 degrees left and 45 degrees right. Uh, we can completely serve our users, but just remember that. Uh, when we talk about the antenna gain, we set uh, the antenna, the maximum power of the, of the antenna, and it's really here. But when we talk about 3 dB of beam of antenna, uh, it's uh, 3 dB less. In our calculation, just remember, if you use a 15 dB antenna uh, in the left side and in the right side in the 3 dB beam, you only have the half power of your antenna. It will be 12 dB antennas. Just, just always remember when you're using an antenna, it's not exactly 15 dB in the left and the red, right side. You should mention the 3 dB beam of your antenna. And it's a uh, little bit 3 dB less in the left and right side of the uh, angle of the main power lump. So, we always heard about uh, side lobs and back lobs. Uh, so let's find out what is what what is the side lob and back lobs. If you um, that, that's what the, the the main lump, that's what we want. That's what we use it in our networks in our wireless communications. 
Uh, the main love is here. It, it's, it's the main love. But uh, what we don't want, but we cannot deal with it, it's always here, is the some, some, some things uh, that we cannot do anything for it. And it's, it's a side love. The side love is the main love after the picking power and after the treaty we being with appears in the antenna pattern. Um, here, it, the, these two is our side loves, and here, these two is our side loves of the 4x4 four four patch antenna. And what about the back club? Uh, it's standing right in the back part of the antenna. Uh, you remember that video? The video start uh, turning around, the, the, the uh, antenna start cycling, and there is a uh, there is a peak power right in the back of the antenna. If, the, if it's it's the test platform, and it's standing at the when we are antenna aim that way, and uh, that's the back club. And that's what what that, that's exactly what we don't want it, but it's still here. We cannot deal with it again. And, and it means if uh, we uh, align the antenna uh, that way, uh, if there is any signal uh, from backward of the antenna, we can't reach it. But how much uh, the antenna pattern can show us, or some specification in the uh, data sheet of the antenna. And it's the front to back ratio. Um, here is an antenna pattern, it's exactly the same pattern that, um, that uh, appeared in the lab. Uh, <coughs> the main love of this antenna is 40. The back love is, uh, is this antenna is 10.28. Uh, so uh, we want to reach the, uh, the front to back ratio. Uh, it means we should uh, uh, put uh, the main plug power and a minus from uh, 10.28 the back plug power, then uh, the front to back ratio appears here. If we have a 26 dBi, it means uh, we have a, a something around minus uh, 4 uh, dB antenna uh, from back 4. It means if they have a radio transmitter uh, in uh, the, right in the back of the antenna, uh, we can receive minus, we can have a minus three antenna to receive that power. Is it easy? Okay. okay. <laughs> One answer, finally. Okay. Let's uh, talk about polarization of the antenna. Uh, well, we have different polarization, but uh, two of them is common, and one of them is daily used. Uh, we have linear polarization and circular polarization. For circular polarization, it's it's uh, it's it's complicated, and we do not use it in uh, daily usage. Uh, we always deal with the linear polarization. Okay, it sounds hard. But uh, you have, you all have some experience with polarization in your day, the daily use, daily um, in your days, and on maybe days before. Uh, you are going to buy some sunglasses. Uh, the seller says it's uh, polarized sunglasses. And you want to know, well, what is the polarized sunglasses? And they uh, show, uh, they show you a picture. There is nothing at the start, uh, but when you uh, view the glass, uh, the sexy lady appears in that picture, <laughs> and you find out uh, it's a polarized. What is it came from? Uh, if you uh, change your uh, head 90 degrees in a left or right, uh, this lady is become disappeared again. Uh, that's the polarization of light. We have it also. Oh, bad news! Uh, we have only five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we start late. It's nine thirty a.m. Oh, okay. Um, we should do it quickly. Uh, the polarization. Uh, in that case, we are mismatching a, uh, a picture in, uh, in, in, after we turning our head. We, we turning our 
uh, we, we lose that picture. It means we are uh, we scratching the light of that picture, uh, but we haven't exactly in, in the antenna. Uh, here uh, is the uh, polarization mismatching loss calculation. It depends on the uh, degrees of the mismatching antenna. And uh, here in this table, uh, we have uh, make it easier, these calculations. Uh, if we have 15 degrees mismatching, uh, we only have 0 0.3 dB loss. But if it goes to 90 degrees, it should be infinity. Uh, but uh, here, uh, for the infinity uh, loss, uh, we don't have it in a, in a real situation because uh, it's never going to be like this. Uh, and it's what we use for, for uh, dual polarizing line ones because uh, we should make sure it in the lab. And uh, just look at this video, how it's up here. Uh, we start to uh, test this antenna again, uh, start turning in the um, pattern, antenna patterns up here, here. Uh, and after that, we are going to make sure the that cross polarization of this antenna, and um, the uh, test antenna should be turned 90 degrees to reach the uh, maximum mismatching possible in this antenna. Uh, after turning back uh, the test antenna, the test forward antenna, uh, we can turn 90 degrees, and uh, uh, that's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, and uh, now we start to test our pattern again, and uh, it should be zero, but it's impossible to reach a zero uh, again. Uh, the, the red, uh, the red uh, pattern, uh, it, it's it's um, it's lower. It's really lower than the main log, but it's not zero or infinity loss. Uh, and uh, we are really going to use this this specification in a minor radius. Ah, I don't have time to explain. Uh, okay, let's go to one of the most, most, most uh, complicated things in um, cabling and uh, antenna and things. Uh, you always heard about VSWR, but um, I don't know that anybody knows exactly what is it came from. Um, uh, look at these pictures. There's two cables here. One of them is LMR200 and one of them is RD6. Uh, but they are exactly the same size and same shape, but uh, they have two big differences. This one uh, is commonly, uh, can be used up to 100 uh, megahertz, uh, but uh, that one uh, it can be used up to 6 gigahertz. And that's, the, that's not the big difference. The big difference is this one is 75 ohms, that one is uh, 50 ohms, but if you use, use at all meter to test it, uh, both of those say, uh, show you zero. Uh, what is it came from? It's a complicated number. It came from, uh, it depends on many things in this cable. Uh, it depends on the diameter of this, uh, the diameter of this dielectric material, the, uh, the epsilon R of this dia uh, dielectric material, and uh, the diameter of that, but it's not depends to the shield of this sensor, this cable, but it depends on everything. And how you can find out, you should ask who manufacture it. Uh, they will tell you the impedance of the antenna. So, uh, for the antenna what we have, it's a simple dipole. Uh, we just lock uh, the impedance of that dipole uh, here. It should be uh, 50 ohms to reach the uh, best uh, one we need, but uh, when the length of the uh, dipoles change, uh, it means that you change the frequency, it becomes bigger. And uh, if you have uh, 0.4 lambda, uh, you will have 40 uh, ohms. But if you have 0.6, you will have 110 uh, ohms. And it means mismatching. Uh, in this mismatching, uh, some things should happen to you, uh, just like uh, warmer, electric warmer, uh, uh, they use ohms to make it heat. Uh, there should be happen, uh, some things happen in the radio uh, equipment, and it means uh, some of our signals 
return to you. Uh, and it means the VSWR. VSWR means a voltage standing wave ratio. And uh, uh, that means if you have a perfect match, 15 ohm, you know, 15 ohm system, uh, all your signal will pass. But if you have uh, 73 ohms in a 50 ohm system, uh, you will have two to one uh, pass your signal. But if it's totally mis mismatch, uh, if it's a 100 ohms or you have an open connector, uh, you will have infinity to one, and uh, it's not good. And that's why my critics said, do not turn your, uh, do not test uh, our equipment. It's good for you also, <laughs> for your currency. Uh, do not test our equipment, wireless equipment, without attaching an antenna. Because uh, the, uh, the uh, VSWR it's becomes to infinity, and it's dangerous for your radio, because uh, it's just like that somewhat, somebody screaming in your head and, and your ear, and uh, it's not good for you. Uh, so, what the deal between retail loss and VSWR? There is an easy conversation for Mola to uh, change the retail loss to the uh, VSWR, uh, and it's just like that. It, it, if we have a VSWR uh, 221, uh, we'll have minus 9.54 retail loss. And what does it mean if we uh, transmit a signal this much? Uh, is losing in return to us. Just like ears, uh, when I'm talking, I can't hear my voice in, in my head, but it's not the same when I'm talking an ear to uh, ear of someone. Uh, some, something is missing when it, it's back to my ear, and uh, th that's, that, that's uh, how much uh, we're losing. The, this much is acceptable for radio equipment manufacturer, and they built their equipment uh, with this signal, with this uh, retail loss compatibility. But if we, uh, in, in, in that one, you know, we are, uh, have a perfect match, uh, it's 1.01, uh, and our retail loss is goes to minus 46. We have some experience, uh, very, very important experience for you also, uh, you know, Antenna Lab. Uh, we just test uh, f uh, f uh, some cables here. Uh, you cannot see me, it's really dark. But uh, first of all, I, sh I put it uh, in uh, one uh, uh, RG1042 uh, in a test platform for know how much uh, the loss will appear or how much the uh, return loss. Uh, that's the loss, it should be compared with it. Uh, zero loss, and we should find out how many losses appear uh, when we are uh, using that cable. But here is the uh, return loss uh, test. Uh, it, this one is minus 50, this one is minus 25, and it really works well uh, down here. After that, we are going to uh, test one uh, Pito cable, uh, which you all you know uh, and you use it for uh, MM6 cables, it's uh, RG316, 316. And uh, there is nothing good with that. Uh, uh, just let me uh, check the video. Uh, <laughs> the game, something else left, I don't know what I'm going to do. So, uh, this is, uh, okay, uh, I'm just uh, uh, put that cable and I'll start uh, to uh, using the tested. Uh, uh, that's not good. It's, it's minus 12. Uh, it's uh, worse than uh, the expect. Uh, here it's uh, something like a minus 40, but here uh, it passed minus 7, and it means if you use this cable by itself, uh, it will uh, cause the changing the impedance of the, your system because this cable is uh, only offered to up to 3 gigahertz, but it's not suitable to up to uh, 6, 5, or 6 up. Uh, here uh, we start testing it at uh, 40, 99, and it's 4.5 gigahertz to 6.5 gigahertz test. Uh, so uh, I should do it quickly. 
Um, this one, uh, a test for, for an antenna. Um, you start uh, testing it. Uh, this, uh, uh, this one is minus 12, uh, it's uh, 4.5, and uh, here is minus uh, 10. And uh, in, in this one, uh, it's, it, it looks good. Uh, up to here, uh, it goes up and it's uh, 6.4. So, uh, that's the impedance for antenna and anything else. Let, let's go for antenna again so quickly. It's really important. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, here, uh, the, some uh, description about antenna gain uh, refers to the ability of the antenna to focus spread uh, radio frequency waves into the narrow. That, that's exactly what the laser uh, do it for us, and that's what, what exactly we expect, uh, expect uh, the antenna to uh, do for us. Uh, this one is a simple dipole. Uh, you can uh, look at the E plane and this plane of that dipole. Uh, uh, it's uh, it cover everywhere and it's just working like a, a normal lamp. Uh, but that one is a, a high gain uh, omnient center. Uh, the uh, degrees uh, it can focus is. It's 4 degrees and it's a 30 dBi antenna uh, and it, it's only, uh, it means it can cover 360 degrees. Uh, if you have a user here, it, it cannot use it or, or if you have a user here, it cannot use this antenna but it's a high end antenna and, and it's focus your signal to somewhere uh, to maximize the gain exactly the same as uh, the uh, laser do it for us. It's a 4 degrees uh, in specification, but uh, it's a 30 dBi, but if someone uh, want to sell it to you, it says it's a 20 dBi. I don't know why. Okay, let's go for another issue. Uh, the effect of the antenna, uh, when we, we are start using an antenna, uh, we just want to compare, uh, is it better to change your antenna in a, in a bad and low signal situation or change it, your wireless module? Uh, which one is better, which one cheaper? Uh, here, um, we have a path loss uh, around 130, 9.6, it's something around uh, 35, 30 kilometers. Uh, the R signal uh, could be found from this formula. Uh, the takes power of your radio, the cable loss uh, takes antenna gain. Uh, the cable loss uh, will be, uh, give your receive signal or transmit signal also. The takes antenna gains will be added to this uh, formula. The tax loss will be affect the signal. And the RX antenna gain will be gain, uh, maximize your signal. And <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the cable loss in the end point uh, is effect uh, to our signal again. Uh, regarding to this calculation, we will have the 100 milliwatts uh, power, uh, 1.5 dB loss, cable loss, 80 dBi uh, antenna uh, with 139.6 path loss, 80 dBi antenna again, uh, and minus 1.5. Uh, cable will have minus 86.6, but to reaching the highest bandwidth, we need minus 71. So we have, we are, first of all, we're going to change the wireless adapters and, uh, and change it to, to a very high power one, uh, 600 milliwatts, that's 28 dB. Uh, then we have minus 78. Uh, we change the wireless adapters on both sides to reach this, this signal. And it goes to minus 78 regarding to this calculation. After that, we are going to change our antenna 6 dB more, uh, exactly 8 dB more, just like the cards. And uh, the, the, because there is two effects from antenna, one here as a TX antenna and one here as an RX antenna, we are going to have minus 70.6, and it's, it's much cheaper uh, in so many ways if you, uh, you change your antenna. So. Uh, how the antenna gain uh, reach in a lab? Uh, I think I forget about others. Okay, okay, that that's the last thing. Uh, I'll forget about others. Uh, and it's, in this in this video, 
we just want to reach the uh, antenna again. Uh, we put this antenna in a test platform. Uh, it starts uh, circling, and uh, we pass uh, the main wall of this antenna. Uh, then we stop it and uh, turn it back to the main wall uh, in a red one. Uh, and uh, log the uh, receive power uh, of this antenna. Then we, we are going to put a standard gain 24 dBi uh, that's tested in our labs with other standard gain antennas to ensure that the antenna gain. And uh, after uh, changing it and after uh, receive that uh, 24 standard gain antenna, we compare these, these results together and uh, the antenna gains will appear this way. Uh, I, I should finish this uh, presentation. I hope it will be useful for you. Uh, there is some a few uh, contents left here, and uh, I'm sorry about that missing. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Questions uh, also after presentation. Um, okay, we have uh, some other presentations before lunch.